Hey everybody, my name is Corey Sullivan. I'm here in uh, South Central Minnesota. Uh, my wife and I just moved here from the Finger Lakes area of New York State. Uh, we moved here to a 53 acre farm that we purchased in late fall. And uh, during the winter months, I've just started my uh, planning process for all the habitat management projects that I wanna do. Um, I wanted to share that process with you guys. Um, if it's your first time owning a piece of property or maybe not, um, and want to do some habitat work, it can be a daunting task to know kind of where to start, just how to get the ball rolling with that. So the winter months are a perfect time for that. Uh, hopefully being able to get started with some of those projects here soon is um, obviously uh, something that I'm hoping to uh, uh, get started here. So uh, like I said, just wanted to share my process. Um, so first things first, I want it to be known that this is not a cookie cutter plan. Every property is different, every person is different, and uh, every habitat management plan um, is different, and that's okay. Um, people are gonna just do things different ways. Um, I think it's important uh, initially to kind of outline your goals with the property. Again, everybody's gonna have different goals. Everybody is in a different situation in life, and it's important to kind of outline your resources and uh, just be aware of you know, what type of resources you have to put into the property. Um, again, that's going to be different for everybody. I'm relatively new to this. I've been doing it for about the last four years or so. Uh, the 75 acres in New York State that my wife and I used to own is kind of where I cut my teeth with habitat management. Um, I found this podcast about the same time, probably about five years ago, the habitat podcast. And, um, I learned a lot of information on that podcast uh, to kind of get myself started on that first piece of property. So I am by no means a professional. Uh, this is by no means the, uh, the only way to do it. These are just my ideas and kind of how I start a habitat uh, management plan. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some naysayers out there that don't agree with what I say, but I'm not perfect and that's my disclaimer. Um, starting out of the box right here. So um, I guess God bless you all. Uh, so I think, uh, like I said, first things first, you want to kind of figure out what your uh, goals are and what the resources are that you have available to you um, when you're starting that habitat plan. Um, next, you need to take a big look at your piece of property and the surrounding properties. Get on Onyx, get on Google Maps, whatever it might be, and zoom way out and just take a look at what your property is composed of and what the neighboring properties are composed of. Um, I think it's pretty important to try to uh, do habitat work on your property that will set it apart from the surrounding properties. Uh, give the deer something the surrounding properties don't have. So um, a very important part to zoom out on a map and start looking at those things. A uh, resource that I found very useful in Minnesota DNR takes each hunting unit and breaks it down into uh, kind of habitat composition and I've used that along with looking at some uh, satellite imagery to kind of figure out what my habitat plan is going to be. Uh, my uh, surrounding area, I'm in, like I said, South Central Minnesota, which is predominantly agriculture and flatland with a little bit of river bottom and um, the uh, unit breakdown that the Minnesota DNR has for my property here is, or my uh, hunting unit is 85% agriculture. So a significant amount is agriculture. There's 2% woodland and um, about 10 to 12% wetland and grassland. Uh, and then the remaining couple percent is uh, open water or residential. So I'm working with predominantly ag land, which uh, if you think about it, really only provides food and some cover for the late spring, summer, and early fall months. Once those crops are harvested, the uh, corn is no longer providing cover. The little bit of cover that uh, beans might be providing is no longer there. And there's essentially zero food from those ag fields as well. So um, I'm wanting to provide cover and food for uh, the wildlife here in my area during the months um, of fall, winter, and spring. So that's my initial plan, um, just based on what the uh, entire area here looks like. Obviously, your area is probably going to be different, um, just you know, depending on what part of the United States you're living in. But that's my situation here in uh, the um, central United States. Um, so. 
Next thing about starting uh, your plan is you want to start looking at the specifics of your land. You know, do you have timber? Do you have tillable? Do you have wetland? You know, do you have any topography that can work to your advantage? And uh, use those things um, as you start this planning process. So I'm actually going to head out to the field here and uh, just um, give you guys a little bit more information about like woodland and um, tillable acreage and some of your options there uh, just to get some, uh, some sparks flying in your head and hopefully get you thinking about some of those habitat projects that you could be doing as you're uh, starting this planning process. So uh, I'll see you on the field. Thanks guys. All right, everybody. Here uh, is um, a look at my tillable acreage. Uh, this is only um, about a third of it. I'm just trying to get out of the wind here for some better audio quality. But um, the tillable on my property, I'm going to go ahead and throw up some drone footage just to give you an idea of kind of how my property lays out. But the tillable acreage on my property makes up about 18 of the 53 acres. Uh, it is on the eastern half of my property, and. Um, Right now it is rented to um, the neighboring farm where um, they do just some cash crop stuff and I get to receive a little bit of income from that. Um, that is an option um, for uh, really anybody and as long as there's a farmer that's willing to do it and the access is um, reasonable for them, uh, make, a, make a little bit of income with your tillable acreage. Um, a lot of people I would say probably are already in that situation, you know. Um, there's a farmer that's historically been doing it for years or um, maybe not but you could always do your best to try to find a local farmer that would want to do that um, like I said obviously a good way to bring in some income and help pay for that property or a new bow or really whatever I guess um, as far as uh, other options for tillable obviously food plots um, I think that's a pretty uh, well-known option um, you might not be familiar with putting them in yourselves but you know that food plots are an option for your tillable acreage um, I have 18 acres here I don't think I'm gonna be doing all of it in food plots I think about half of it I'm gonna leave um, for the farmer to farm and the rest I'm going to uh, do a little bit of uh, late season food source with uh, with some corn and the rest is gonna be in a vitalized food plot um, uh, really focusing on late season food sources really um, as the crops around me get harvested. Uh, that's kind of what I want here uh, for um, Yeah, fall and winter hunting. So that's my plan with my piece of property here um, I'm definitely looking into a little bit of CRP if you're unfamiliar with CRP uh, It is a federal program in which you can enroll uh, Acreage that has previously been farmed you can enroll that in um, the CRP program, which is a conservation reserve program and uh, essentially, uh, it would be planted with, um, you know, food and cover for the deer. You know, something that's going to grow up, you know, head height, and uh, like I said, provide food and cover for the deer. Uh, there are some caveats to that, but you can talk to your local uh, USDA representative, and they should be able to help you out uh, answering any sort of questions or anything with the CRP programs. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit here, but... I do have to wait a year uh, in order to enroll mine. Um, that's a requirement to that you have to own the property for a year. Uh, so I'm definitely looking into doing something that, especially maybe some buffer strips between the wood, between the woods and stuff like that. But uh, I think uh, it's something that I'll definitely be interested in. Uh, obviously, um, there's many options with the tillable acreage and everyone's going to have a different plan you know uh, some things cost more some things provide income so um, you know just do your best to learn what you can about your local area you know talk to some local farmers if you're interested in you know renting out the property uh, to be farmed um, another thing that you can do with these open spaces is you know some fruit tree planting and stuff like that um, Obviously, that's more of a long-term uh, thing. It's going to take several years for those uh, apple trees or fruit trees in general to uh, grow big enough and um, and produce, you know, a food source for the deer. Uh, so that's one of those things that I really like to start thinking about sooner than later uh, because it does take three to five years for those uh, fruit trees to get established and start producing. So um, food plots, definitely a short-term, uh, more of an easy uh, plan where um, 
your apple trees are going to take longer to develop. So that's definitely something that I like to think about sooner than later. Um, really planting any sort of woody vegetation, you know, shrubs, fruit trees, anything like that is going to take a few years uh, to get established. So those are some options with uh, with your tillable acreage. Um, obviously, there's going to be other options out there that I you know haven't covered or haven't uh, talked about, and um, you know those are just kind of the basics um, of some things that I like to think about when it comes to my tillable acreage. So next, we're going to be moving on to uh, my uh, river woodland area and uh, kind of tell you about what your options are with that. Thank you. Hey everybody, we're now in uh, the forested area of my property. Uh, like I said, 53 acres um, is the total acreage on my property. About 18 of that is uh, tillable and uh, the rest is uh, timber. And um, my timber here is, uh, and in like most timber in South Central Minnesota is mostly cottonwood river bottom uh, timber stands. As you can see, I've got cottonwood everywhere. Um, I do have some oak. I do have some maple, uh, box elder, and a couple other random species. But generally speaking, um, like everything that you can see behind me, everything is cottonwood. And um, cottonwood essentially has no wildlife value. So um, for me, I, um, I like to start out thinking about your timber stand first, um, before most things. A lot of people don't even think about having timber harvested or anything, or don't even think about doing habitat management. To their uh, timber stands, you know, most people focus on food pots, food pots, food pots. That's the pretty things, but um, personally, I think uh, managing your, your uh, timber stands is probably uh, one of the more important things that uh, most people uh, simply overlook. So um, the one thing about doing work in your timber is it's going to take a few years to start seeing benefits of having timber harvested. And uh, so that's why it's something that I like to um, I like to uh, start looking into pretty much right away. Um, and I think that uh, pretty much everybody should do that. Um, why is your timber so important? Well, look at my timber here. This is mostly uh, large cottonwood trees and um, uh, it's gonna be a pretty much closed over story during the summer, which means no light is getting to the ground. There is no, um, sorry, my dog is just having to take a crap right uh, behind me in the video, but uh, um, there's no food or cover down low for the deer in an area like this. Um, obviously, that's a problem in my opinion. Uh, I kind of uh, believe that if you have timber value on your property, you really don't have that great of deer habitat. You kind of have to pick one or the other. Um, you know, if you're going to have timber value, you're not going to have the best possible habitat for deer. That's just my opinion. Um, but besides a couple oak trees or, you know, some other hard mass and soft mass producing trees, you know, that up there, isn't really doing much for a deer that's you know three foot off the ground so um i like to get the canopy opened up allow the sun to get to the ground which will uh create you know both food and browse species on the ground for the deer um obviously you know most people aren't gonna just know how to go out and harvest timber that's why i recommend just talking to a local state forester they'll come out look at what you have and um, they can help you through a harvest and pretty much lead you in any direction you please when it comes to your uh, timber stand um generally speaking um i would say most timber stands are gonna need work done if you're really trying to optimize your habitat for um for uh, wildlife. Uh, there's obviously gonna be exceptions to that, but generally speaking, there is some work you can do. Like I said, you just wanna open up that canopy and get the sun down to the ground. Um, you know, hinge cutting, flush cutting, mineral stumps is all sort of uh, management stuff that you can do yourself, you know, with a small chainsaw or something if you do it safely. And um, information on the Habitat Podcast, uh, Habitat Chat Facebook page is uh, available, which will cover all sorts of stuff like that. I'm sure you can find multiple posts associated with that sort of thing. But 
Um, once you've bought a piece of property, I recommend calling one of the state foresters um, that's available to you and having them come out to take a look at things and consider your options. Um, having timber harvested um, can put money in your pocket. It can provide you money to maybe buy a tractor that you don't have or money to put in food plots, you know, um, depending obviously on how much income you would be able to bring in with, with uh, having timber harvested. Uh, there are a lot of, um, not a lot, but there are some programs that you can enroll your property in in uh, that um, you're kind of contractually obliged to follow certain management um, ideas and plans for your property. Uh, they offer tax incentives and stuff like that. Uh, that's something that your state forester can definitely uh, help you uh, learn more about as well. I personally am not a huge fan of that because then you're, like I said, contractually obliged uh, normally for several years to follow a certain uh, prescription for that property. And uh, if I want to go over here and hinge cut that box elder, I want to be able to without, um, you know, needing to make sure I'm following the contract that I've signed with the state. So a lot of options for you when it comes to your timber. Um, but like I said, you just want to open up that canopy and get sunlight to the ground. That's going to provide both food and cover to the ground. Um, obviously, your entire property doesn't need to look like that, but you can uh, you can do patches here and there, and a forester can definitely help you come up with a plan uh, that would work best for your property. On my property here, I had a forester come out uh, within the first couple weeks of owning the property, and uh, we determined that there is harvestable timber here. Uh, it's mostly in cottonwood, and uh, luckily we were able to find a buyer and a logger for that cottonwood relatively quickly, and. Um, uh, hopefully going to have some uh, timber being harvested here in the next few weeks. Uh, definitely trying to get it done before the springtime, uh, before the ground thaws out. So, um, like I said, use the Habitat uh, Facebook page, <coughs> Habitat Chat Facebook page um, to ask questions in regards to timber tillable, you know, really ask any questions, food plots. There's a lot of really good resources out there. Um, and, uh, I think that, uh, um, you know, it's a great place to get started and hopefully this information that I've given you in the, uh, in the last, uh, several minutes is enough to get your uh, mind thinking about what kind of a uh, habitat management, um, projects you can get doing on your new property. So have a good one guys. It's, uh, the first week of February here in Minnesota. We have about two feet of snow here still, so I'm just able to follow deer trails around, but I'm hoping some is going to get melted off in this little bit of warmer weather we're going to have, and uh, I can start really getting into some of my habitat management plans. So 2023, it's here, and uh, before you know it, it's going to be hunting season, so get out there and get doing some of those uh, habitat projects. Have a good one, guys.